So guys, this year Shu and I are both coaching a team, but I'm not here to overmanage you guys or anything. John, you're one of the best bowlers in the game for a reason. Kevin, you've been having a great day out there. I know you guys are going to do fine if you just trust your judgment and stay cool up there. Wood? What are you doing playing that wood? A beaver wouldn't have played that wood. My grandmother wouldn't have played that wood. Whoa, 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 Shu. He's doing his best out there. His best isn't good enough. I don't see you bowling out there. I would have been out here if I wanted to. Maybe I didn't want to. I'd rather announce like John Madden. We actually knocked you out of this tournament. Yeah, whatever. We're taking five. We're taking five. <laughs> Life is fun, and so is Candlepin Bowling. There have been dozens of bowling shows on TV before, but we're not them, and we don't want to be. Dan Shu Gothi, our coaches one team of talented kids, and I, Rob Taylor, coach another. We're a different type of show, and we're going to turn your notion of bowling show upside down. We are the new generation. Welcome to Candlepin New Generation, a show that takes a game you occasionally play with your friends and treats it way more seriously than you should. If my team loses this match, Rob, I'll never commentate again. I'm holding you to that. He's Dan Gauthier, I'm Rob Taylor, and our two teams are competing in bowling glory. Dan, who's your team? Rob, I've got a pretty good team here today. It's Alex Haysert, young man from Fun Time Lanes. His uh, high singles are 178, his high triple is at 400 even. And his high five is 648. And his uh, claim to fame is he's been our back-to-back -back D1 champs on Candlepin for Kids. He'll be bowling with Craig Holbrook. He's been here before, that's for sure. I think he's made it every single time we've had one of these events. High single of 197, high triple of 508, high five of 781. And he's been the sixth-time Pro Bowler of the Year, Rob. That may be threatening. That. that may be threatening, but my team features Kevin Jones, Valley Cat Lanes, high single 186, high triple 419. He's the international first place all events champion, and his partner, Jonathan Boudreaux, age only 18, but he won this tournament last year. He's got a high single of 190 and a high triple of 455. You've already got the stats, now we need the analysis. Let's send it over to our third partner of our broadcast team, Liam Fitzgerald Ledger. Liam, what's your analysis? A lot on the line today, Rob. It's a good chance for Jonathan Boudreaux to be considered elite. Ah, the old elite argument. Great fodder for the morning talk radio shows. Ah, but is Boudreaux a first ballot Hall of Famer? Well, I think we're about to find out. Let's send it down to our gentleman on the lanes, Kevin Jones versus Alex Hazert. Crowd, let's hear it for him. Let's get this match underway. Let's go Team Rob. Go get him, Kevin. Kevin Jones tossing the first ball of the match. Four horsemen on the right side. Alex Hazard looking to answer. Nice little spare leave there. Kevin just off, going Whoa. for the spare. The ball ended up two lanes away, Rob. That's something we're going to see a lot today. Here at, and as you see with Hazard's pin coming back, here at lanes and games, the pin setters are higher than they normally are, so that creates for some very weird action that we're not used to seeing. Yeah, they come down like an arm instead of straight down. And Hazard picks up a nice 10, so an early lead for Hazard. Getting an early lead is important in these big high pressure matches, Rob. And now we can go to our keys to the game. My key for Kevin and Boudreaux is to keep a calm head here. I really want them to establish the first ball early, not get too down. They're both great bowlers, and I think that they can have a strong day today. Shu, what's your key to the game? I really want my team to establish strike one, Rob. That's a, that's a baseball term. It is not. I, I mean, I get it. You, you want the first bowler to be able to throw a strike? No, I mean, get ahead in the count. Establish your fastball early, you know? Yeah, if you say so. Hazard making a nice spare bid there. Bid. That one could carry another. Oh, Ooh, great bid by Hazard. I was going to say bid, he made it. Jones trying to keep his head in this game. Nice little 10. Kevin Jones, we mentioned in the intro, is the international champion. That means he is a $1,000 ICBA scholarship winner. He's out of Alley Cat Lanes, and we've been waiting a while to see him on our show. Finally breaks through during our Pro Kid Tournament, which is a tournament that kind of favors the older kids a little bit. And it, it tends to, but every year we see at least one kid, 9 or 10 at least. Uh, who makes the tournament. We had a couple of young kids this time. I was really rooting for them. We did. Charlie Collins was one worth mentioning. Yeah. Youngster out of Woburn Bulladrome who upset. He was great. He finished with a 112. He almost pulled his match off. I would have loved to see him move on. Nice bid by Kevin. Steal it! Steal it! Nice shot by Kevin Jones. Uh, First mark of the match has been fired. Well, you know, you hit the key word there, Rob. Steal. I wouldn't be proud of that. Ooh, mm. so close by Hazard. So mm. close. Team, Pains me to see team it. Team Shoe hits him. Team Rob steals him. Hazard looking to steal a 10 out of this one. 
and he's on it. Stealing him. Kevin Jones looking to drop a big mark. Looking for the fill. He's on it. It always happens when you steal a shot. You get a nice fill like that. Pretty ball. He's going for the triangle. Hazer now looking to get his first mark of the match. Yeah, Kevin was probably hoping that Wood wouldn't have made it all the way to the gutter. Maybe if it had stopped and gone back, it might have taken some more pins. Beautiful leave by Team Shoot. Alex. Two great spare leaves. Jones looking for the shot. Just off. Sneaks now, by. Now there's one great spare leave, Rob. <laughs> Hazard looking to be on a single pin. Great pinning by Hazard so far as well. Great pinning by Alex. Quality Beautiful spare. Game going so far by Hazard. Jones looking for the out. He'll take nine. So an early three pin difference in this one. Hazard on a mark. They're looking to chip yeah. into that. Team Shoe still perfect. Perfect Piece. game in Candlepin, as you know, is every box with a ton or better. Piece of wood in the gutter. We're going to have Kevin clear that here quick. Now you mentioned Kevin's accomplishments. Hazard, we are threatened by him. Team Rob, admittedly. Two-time champion in the oldest age group of our show, Candlepin New Generation. And he's known for the clutch marks. A couple yeah. years back, he needed an eight fill in the last ball of the match in order to get the win, and he dropped a hammer. We called it the strike heard around the world. It was impressive. And so if it's it a clutch was. match. They're all clutch, Rob. Nice shot by Jones going into the half with the mark. Hazard! Oh! Oh! A nicer shot, Rob. Oh, I hate to shoot. admit it, but that was pretty. Hazard is pumped up. I'd be pumped up too. I only made. Let's take another look I, at that. Pretty if I made shot any shots by even close to that. <laughs> Hazard cutting the two pins over to give his partner a little momentum. Four pin lead for Hazard and Holbrook. Holbrook's in the red. Boudreaux is in the navy blue. They're taking a quick moment. Other than that, the they're practically reset. twins, Rob. Couple of lefties up there. Couple of lefties. Boudreaux models his game after the veteran Holbrooks. These two faced each other last year in the semifinals when Boudreaux and his partner took down Craig Holbrook. This year, Boudreaux looking to do it again. Well, if he needs any advice on how to play this, Craig can just turn around and ask Alex. That's true. On my side here, I'm telling Boudreaux to just be on that two pin. It might fly over. Nice bid. Doesn't carry. Um, I bowled next to Jonathan earlier in the qualifying matches today, Rob, and uh, he's throwing a good ball all day, but it's just this is not a house where his ball tends to work real well. And he's picked it up quite a bit in the qual in the qualifying rounds and the in the knockout rounds, but. Uh, qualifying he was definitely struggling to get any good action and good pinfall to pick folks up to speed on the format of the tournament we had kids bowling with pros today at lanes and games the top 24 kids were paired up with the top 24 pros seeds one through eight earned buys in the tournament and earned the corresponding bowler so one with one two with two three with three and then we had the wild cards nine through 24 kids got to draw nine through 24 pros as Holbrook buries the head pin and yet, the wood, he's got a lot of wood all the way across the whole alley. But I, I wouldn't call this a gimme wood at all. No, certainly not. If I'm aiming right, I believe. Yep. Yeah, I'd have gone right he there. Did that, yeah. Pretty shot by Holbrook. He was trying to, trying to go just far enough right that his ball would drive straight into the ninth pin, and it did. Craig Holbrook, a veteran, been on TV dozens of times before. Shows going back to Channel 5 Bowling, back to Stars and Strikes. Jonathan Boudreaux. He's trying to get that mark now because you don't want to fall too far behind, obviously. It's like uh, Alex and Craig, Team Shoe. He's got like a seven and a ball lead now, so looking to make it double digits. Interesting shot for Holbrook as Boudreaux looks for his first mark of the match. He's on it. Yeah, he's right on it. Where are you playing this, Dan? Well, I think I want to go right side, Rob. You get two pieces of wood there, and ideally, the way the ball flies here, if you hit your ball on that red line, like it, the ball's going to come back on the lane somewhere. Not necessarily lane two. It could end up on lane one. <laughs> nice bid. You were right. Back. It did come back. It's rolling over. Yeah. Just a little bit in front of the channel. It was a working ball. So now Holbrook going for the 10. It's an important 10. And he's on it. Nice shot by Craig. Tight match early now. Boudreaux with a chance to chip away. This is what I said for my team. Keep their heads in this one. Don't let it get away too much early. I've got two clutch bowlers, and Boudreaux can pull it out late. Yeah, Boudreau well, on knowing, that head pin. knowing that Team Shoe needed a win, I was actually in the roll-off earlier, Rob, but I let Craig Holbrook beat me just because I wanted him to be Team Shoe. And look, it's paying off. Buries that one. A lot of wood over yeah, there. He wants that. Oh, that right one's ugly. Boudreaux carries the mark. Two in a row for Jonathan Boudreaux. So this won't be bad for Holbrook unless he hits that right piece of wood. There you go. Uh, Craig's too good to do that. Nice mark pickup by Holbrook. Craig's going to clear his channel. 
Now we mentioned Jonathan Boudreau, a youngster at age 18, bowling on the pro side. This is his first year where he would actually be in the professional circuit. We saw him years before on Candlepin, then four kids, now Candlepin New Generation. Jonathan lit up our show for 10 seasons, nine seasons rather, before last year moving to the pro side and doing damage there. Now he's looking to carry it over. It feels like he's been on the pro side now for a long time. Boudreau drops a hammer to end the half. It was a slow start by Boudreau, but now he's picking it up. Holbrook's and on it. Oh, that was almost a so what? So ball. close, Dan. So close. And yeah, yet. We'll take it. And yet so Team far. Team will take eights all the way, Rob. Very Eagle. makeable lead. Eagle eye like Craig. No Holbrook's problem. all over it. We've got a great match going so far, folks. You're going to want to catch the end of this one. Join us after the break. Woburn Bulladrome, established in 1940, has 40 lanes with automatic scoring, including bumper lanes, glow bowling, and more, featuring four different birthday party packages. If you bring the cake, we'll do everything else, including food, drink, and paper goods. Come spend your Friday and Saturday nights with us when the lights go off and the music and fun go on. Enjoy our game room, check out our pro shop, or join a winter league. We're right by I-93 and I-95 with plenty of parking available. Woburn Bulladrome. For more info, go to www.wubernbowl.com. So for the show this year, Dan, I really want it to be about empowering the kids, you know? For kids, by kids. By kids? How's that gonna work? Positions, people, positions, people, places, people, places. All right, guys, pizza's ready. Pizza! <laughs> the second string is presented by Woburn Bulladrome. Go to WoburnBull.com to learn about their four different birthday packages. They are an official center of the new generation. Underway, three pins is the difference. We're gonna send it over to Liam for a quick sideline hit. Every ball is on a mark, Rob. Looks like they're getting into a group up there. And now we're back, hazard all over that head pin. Kevin as well, two more makeable spare leaves. Two big Brings fills too. Lead up to five, every bowler was on a mark, Rob. Hazard's all over his mark. That's the way to close out your half, every bowler in the match on a mark. Don't. A little off. He wanted to be right on that two pin. Oh, tip in, tip in, come on. <laughs> nice Keep bit. Keep begging, Rob. We're gonna take everyone we can get. Kevin looking for the 10. And I believe, was that a foul? No, no, it was not. Else. That was a different lane. So nice 10 by Jones. Now Hazert, looking to be all over that head pin. <laughs> oh, the beeping you heard that you thought was a foul was yeah. all our manual score corrections. Hazard oh, working on the spare. Hammer. Kevin looked like a half Worcester. They're tumbling back. That's not bad. Oh, come on, it's coming it's back. On. Ball, oh. nice bid. Now, Kevin he now looking around, to pick it up. Discouraged and still almost had the shot go for him. Kevin's having a little trouble finding his ball right now. So after a little technical difficulties, Alex's oh, lane reset. So he's gonna get a six fill, but he then has to restart the box. So he's restarting the box. He gets a six fill despite his terrible shot here. And now he's gonna look to pick up the mark. Well, it gives us an opportunity to talk about an odd, well, beautiful shot by Alex. An odd Great quirk try. of candle pin bowling or any bowling really. Is that if you do have a technical difficulty on the lane. In this case, the lane resetting. To, and you're on a mark, you have to keep your fill, but then you re-bowl the entire box. So it can create the, the very odd circumstance of sometimes ending up with a box that's lower than your fill. Or Which like a six a fill in a strike box. It right. doesn't make any sense. But We didn't see either of those. No. So as you see from the scoreboard here, scores looks normal despite the glitch. A 13 pin lead for Alex and Craig right now. Three boxes to go. And really so didn't affect us at all, which is what you want to see. So Hazer looking to get back on that head pin. Now Kevin's turn, he's on it. Come on, trip that nine pin. There we go, there we take another. Why not, why not, why not, come on. Well, you're doing a lot of begging today, Rob. It's working, Dan. <laughs> Single pin for Mr. Jones. 
Hayes has got a decent shot of his own. A little Both bit off. Bowlers. Looking to home in on the single ball. pin. All over it. Great shot by Jones. Yeah, I'm impressed. He's pinning very well. That's going to tighten this one up. Sure is, Rob. Whoa! You call me begging. <laughs> well, I didn't beg. Too classy for that, Rob. We'll take it, though. 12 pin lead minus Kevin Sville. This is going to be down to a one mark game, Rob. Got to remember, Craig and Boudreaux both with marks at their halfway point, too. That's going to give both of them the chance to chip away as and well. Boudreaux with a two ball, Phil. Now, with two boxes left, this is typically when Hazard turns it into high gear. Boom! Oh, did not get rewarded for a good solid pocket hit, Rob. Jones as always for Team A little Show. off. And there, he tumbling. gets rewarded for a not perfect hit. That's the game of candlepin bowling. So now he's got that single 10 bin. This is a chance for him to. To come right back. Hazard. Oh, oh great nice bid. Play. That ball hopped off the lane. And. Oh, Kevin just off as well. Two great bids. Hazard looking for the out. Picks up his 10. Great box by Hazard. Three balls right yes. where he wanted them. Kevin's a little off, Nine. so he'll lose a pin. And we continue to tighten things up. Hazard Four having a little match. trouble remembering to hit reset. Four pins the difference. One box to go for each of our young men bowlers. They're both looking at good games right around a 120, maybe a 130 with the mark. We've seen a high octane, high scoring match early. 106 to 111. Hazard's on that head pin again. A little easier than last time. Jones, off. Looking for that wood to trip. That's a very makeable spare leave on both sides. It's one of the rare times where Jones missed the head pin and has a somewhat tougher leave. Nice shot by Hazard. Ah, he's pumped. He's both hands pumped on that one. We talked about him being clutch. That was five consecutive object pins there. Now Kevin's looking for his outs. He's going to be handing Jonathan about a 10-pin deficit, but Jonathan has that strike. Yeah, and if you throw a second strike, it erases the whole deficit. He tossed a huge double strike last year on our show against Mr. Craig Holbrook. He's going to look to do it again today. Craig tossed one earlier today against me. <laughs> Everybody's tossing double strikes, Rob. They're going like... Like they're not hard at all. When well, these bowlers make it look easy sometimes. Jones, a very funky nine out. Not a bad game at all. 115 for Kevin Jones. I think you're going to be able to see it on TV because of the nature of the way these pin setters come down at an angle. There's a lot of space. enough space for a grown man to stand completely straight up down there in the pit. You see a lot of times on a punch, the ball pins just go straight up, count to three, and they come down and hit something. So now Hazard. Five pin lead plus oh this. Boy. It's 14 now. Nice ball by Alex Hazard. This is typical last box hammer, Phil. We talked about him being clutch, and down the stretch he was. 130 game for Alex Hazard. And he's a former champion on this show for a reason. 130 game for Hazard. 14 pin lead for Hazard and Holbrook. Both bowlers on a mark here, Rob. Craig's looking to fill a spare. Jonathan a strike. Boudreaux on a strike. He's going to adjust. Our sign featuring the ICBA a little bit to give him some room. Great fill by Holbrook. Are we going to allow that, Rob? Are we going to allow him to move the sponsor sign? Gives him a little more recognition. Boudreaux looking for that double. If that trips, it will. Yeah, we're going to have to go back and look at the rules, see if he was allowed to touch that sign. A huge hammer by <laughs> Boudreaux. You're still <laughs> messing with the sign. Oh, no. And Craig just off. And he could have gotten a break there, Rob, but Team Shoe doesn't get many. We're going to make our own breaks. He's going to be looking to pull a 10 out of this. That tightens things right up, if not giving the edge to Boudreaux. Didn't we say this could happen? We just knew he was going to throw a double, didn't we? We mentioned the double strike from last year, and he does it again here. Boudreaux, we talk about clutch with Hazard. Boudreaux's one of the most clutch in the game as well. Lead for Craig, but keep in mind that whatever ball... John throws here is counting sure. double. Yeah, it's going to count double. So he puts a six, it's basically, you know, he's going to have a lead because he's going to have a tie and then another extra ball for the fill. Boudreaux looking for three. He's off, and he gets exactly that, <laughs> six. So it's temporarily tied, but anything he gets on the second ball will give him the lead. Holbrook has a chance to answer here. Very nearly the same lead. mark. An extra pin for Holbrook. Holbrook, a little full. So now Boudreaux, his look's locked in. If he can just be not flush in that head pin. Sneaks by and almost stole it. We're going to need to retrieve that wood. Holbrook now looking for the out. Tough eight. Tough eight for Holbrook. Boudreaux now looking for the 10. And he's on it. And so this match shifts in a heartbeat. Those tumbling pins in that six box gives the edge now to Boudreaux and Jones. Five pins. Five pins. Boudreaux of course. at a 109 after seven boxes. Pretty good score, especially since he was struggling earlier today in some of the qualifying matches. He's found his action now, Rob. 
We keep discussing bowlers being clutch. Holbrook's up there with him as well. He can turn it on in a heartbeat. Three boxes left for these bowlers to do damage in a tough half Worcester now by Boudreaux. Both cat bowlers uncharacteristically off the headpin for the first time. Holbrook nearly oh, takes it. Ooh, and some backspin back on that pin. Hit it behind the five, but not enough to knock it down. Bouncing ball from Boudreaux. Rare. Normally his ball very smooth. That one looks like it caught the foul line, and it's going to leave him a tough out. Holbrook with a big chance to gain with a 10. The longer you bowl, the slipperier your balls get here. There's some lanes oil out there, and the ball picks up the lanes oil. And Unless you really wipe it off between balls. We have a dead even match now, Ron. Dead even now. Two boxes left, all even. So Craig Holbrook, the wily le lefty veteran versus not a rookie anymore, Jonathan Boudreaux. Both bowlers looking for a spot in the finals, Rob. Decent amount of money at stake even for the kids on their gift cards. Boudreaux, hammer time. Nice shot by Jonathan Boudreaux. So he bounces right back from that five box. Impressive job keeping his head on it. That would. I want to say it rolled over close enough to make Craig's shot a little easier, but you wish it had rolled maybe twice as far. He's going to have to either go light. Um, hey, oh, wow. Picks it up clean. I'll, I'll tell you, looking at a replay on that, Take I look. thought he hit it in no man's land. It was dead full. I thought he had to either split the pins and throw it over there or hit it on the outside. But somehow, with that high gap above the pins, something went up and came right down on a 10 pin. Here, the key is just giving it a chance. That's what Craig did. He put it on the object pin. He had a little wooden back there, too, as you take another mm. look. Pin rebounding over and carrying the 10. So you'd have to say perhaps a small edge to team Boudreaux, j Mom, and Kevin, because they've got the extra ball in the fill. Holbrook's all over it. That's a tough I was going to say, Holbrook could negate it somewhat with so a big fill, but 1-8-9 with Wood, but... Now well, Boudreaux gives he him a chance. A pin. He did break Literally a pin. broke a pin, Rob. <laughs> We're going to be sending somebody down to get the pieces, pick up the carnage. Well, it makes it interesting, though, Rob. I mean, I don't want to jinx him, but Boudreaux needs to not go down the middle on this. And Holbrook. All right, that's about the only way Holbrook's Holbrook going to pull this off is if Boudreaux comes down the hole. <laughs> you have to think Boudreaux's too good to be there. He is, but oh, wow, they're still Those tumbling. extra pins are huge, that, too. It, for a split second, it looked like four. And the only chance Holbrook has to pick them all up here. And <laughs> nope. Great bid, but that does clinch it. So Jonathan Boudreaux and Kevin Jones will be advancing to our finals. Heck of an effort by Craig Holbrook and Alex Hazert. Wild finish here, Rob. Wild finish. Great broken match. Broken pins, broken hearts. We hard. saw the bowlers save their best for last. 254 to 250 the final score. Join us for a little bit more fun after the break. Academy Lanes in Haverhill, Massachusetts is one of the largest candle pin centers in the world. Bring your family and friends to our 48-lane facility with a pinball and video arcade, kino and lottery tickets, and snacks, beer, and wine available. Drop by on Friday, Saturday, or Sunday afternoon or night for Glow Bowling, where the lanes are rocking with a state-of-the-art lighting and sound system. Have your next birthday party with us. We provide a fun, inexpensive atmosphere for any size party in Glow or regular bowling. For more info or to join a men's, ladies, junior, or senior league, check out academylanes.com. Leo's Super Bowl in Amesbury, Massachusetts is a premier entertainment center with 24 lanes, the new Mammoth Arcade Room, including a 10 foot by 12 foot projection TV, Friday night cosmic bowling, and Saturday night moonlight oldies, there's plenty of attractions. Have your functions and parties with us, with two spacious rooms fitting up to 45 people each, with plasma TVs and DVD sets, a Bose music system, and wireless internet. Bring your food, or enjoy a full catering menu with Tony G's Pizza and Deli. That's Leo's Super Bowl. For more info, find us on Facebook, or go to leosuperbowl.com. What's it like bowling with the pros today? I think it's good because they can give you a lot of uh, tips on how to bowl better. Do you have uh, a pro that you'd want to be matched up with if you make the show? Um, I think it would be Craig Holbrook because he's one of my favorite lefty bowlers. And he's one of the best of all time. Yeah. I'm trying to show them up because my brother was once a pro. His name was Sean Patrick Fitzgerald Legier. I'm trying to be like him right now as we speak. It means, it feels like what my grandfather used to do. I'm wearing this shirt. This is a 40 year old shirt of my grandfather. This is, he wore this when he was 16 years old. And this is going to bring me luck. And this reminds I know a lot of pros who are here today who used to bowl with him. And yeah, I think about it a lot. And I want to say hi to him. And I hope he's doing well. And this is going to be a great tradition to pass on. That's awesome. Um, can we see the back? I saw there was a little something going on in the back of the shirt. Hope that's good enough. I hope that's good enough for you. Pro series, it's a really special event. How do you how do you feel bowling with the pros? Kind of nerve-wracking because I'm bowling with actual pros and it's 
great to be with them, but it feels like you're against them at the Welcome back to Candlepin New Generation. I find myself in the all too familiar position of being here with the second place team, unfortunately. Heck of a match though, wasn't it guys? Absolutely. Now, the match unfortunately didn't have as much flow as we usually see, right? We had the lane reset on you. How, how did that affect your concentration? Did it affect you at all? Um, at first, not really, because I mean, I was going to keep a six fill no matter what. And then I said, well, if I throw a strike or I get a spare leave, then uh, maybe I could get a spare because what I had before, I almost got the spare, but I didn't. But uh, I could have if I actually got a good leave off the first the head pin, but I didn't. So. So you saw it as an opportunity because you were on your third ball and you knew you didn't have a mark, so it was an opportunity to come back and throw a spare. So that's the way you should look at it, right? Absolutely. It didn't work out that way, getting the 189. Craig, on the other hand, this time you faced the same thing you did to me in the qualifying rounds. You faced a hot bowler coming out and throwing a double against you. Was there any turning point in that half? Was it the double or something else where you felt like the match might be going his way? It was absolutely the double. I dropped nine, and then he's throwing the ball second. And the first thing that enters my mind is don't let him throw a double here. And sure enough, he did it. And then the last program I was on, he did it to me then too. But um, no, it was really close. Everybody bowled well. It was fun. Yeah, it was a fun match. I agree with that. Um, I think Rob's going to have more fun now talking to the winners. We're going to turn it over to Rob. I am here with my winning team. Guys, you did great out there. Kevin, first time on TV. Yep. Nerves? How are they? Pretty bad. Beginning was rough and then tried to settle in. Anything you were doing to try to overcome some of those nerves? Any box that stood out where you really felt? Like uh, after I threw, I think it was like a four, like a five boxer on my first two. Just tried to like settle in, slow down, and hit the pins. There was a single pin that you were all over. I was impressed. What was going through your head on that one? Hit the shot, or else we're gonna lose. Oh, well, you hit it and you won. So there you go. Your partner Jonathan Boudreaux did a great job going on a little run in the second half. You had the strike at the end of the half. What was going through your head as you were getting ready for that ball? Well, I had the strike in the ninth box. I knew we were even going into the last two, and you know he had a split and made it. But I knew with my strike we were still even. And uh, throwing the half Worcester on the first ball of the strike, I actually thought I gave him the match. But uh, you know, luckily for me, he didn't get a very good leave himself, and I uh, was able to just pin it out. Your pinning was great. You also had the good first ball working. The double strike, which you had at the halfway point. At the halfway point, what were you thinking? Well, I had the one strike sitting, and you know that was nice, you know, to match the mark. Anyways, from you know, Craig matched my mark, but it, it was still a close match. The double helped out. You know, you can make up a lot of pins quickly, and uh, you know, just uh, I guess it all played out the right way. So now you guys are waiting to see who you will face in the semifinals. That will be next week, so make sure you come back to watch our semifinals match. And in two weeks, it'll be these guys versus whoever wins that one. So thank you for joining us for Candlepin New Generation from Lanes and Games in Cambridge, Massachusetts. playing a wood. A beaver wouldn't have played that wood. My grandmother wouldn't have played that wood. No, I'm not my life. <laughs> <laughs> I now I remember the second <laughs> Testing, testing, one, two, three. They're, they're, they're telling me you're, you're uh, a little comedian over here. What's going on? Are you going to give me a good interview? I don't know. 